Okay guys, how you doing? It is the Honeydew Carpenter and here it is. The long awaited for rocket mass heater. Mainstream rocket mass heater. Beautiful, adds to the decor of any room and it works fabulously. This is not a concept. It uses NASA space shuttle re-entry technology in it and it is incredible. Anybody who's looked at the traditional rocket mass heaters knows they use a big barrel and a big pile of mud to run their pipes through. Um, either that or they can be beautiful but they're a huge masonry project, project and uh, quite expensive and they are a permanent structure. This is a rocket mass uh, heater that you can actually just disassemble a piece at a time and you can take it with you wherever you go and it is to scale so what you see is what you get I'm gonna break this thing down for you guys one piece at a time so let's just move the whole thing the bench the stove up above there is a air Crete insulated stove pipe that is the engine to the entire thing we'll just get rid of it all and I will just pop it in and bring it down one piece at a time component by component and show you how this thing works it is a incredible piece of technology hey guys before we get started I just wanted to say if you like what we're doing and you like the content be sure and like and subscribe and click the bell at the bottom to get notifications also check out our Etsy store that's where you can learn everything you need to know about getting your own foam mate and your foam generator so you can participate in these air creep projects. Here we are. We've completely cleared the room. We're going to put this thing together. But this actual stove has about 23 different parts to it. And I'm just going to drop them in one at a time and let you know what they are. This is the easiest to operate, idiot proof rocket mass heating system that you will ever see it's absolutely incredible so let's go ahead and get started the first thing you're gonna wanna do is do a little bit of prep work we're gonna go ahead and drop in a mantle there you go it's just a place to put your stove the next thing we're gonna do is some prep work in this is just an example of a tiny air crate house or basement with windows and you'll want to remove a window and we would just take and build us a aircrete window insert I did it in Julie's cabin it was easy it was simple and here we go so I'm just gonna drop that in and there we go guys we have an aircrete window insert now the whole system is built around the firebox the firebox is absolutely amazing guys oh, let's drop that in and there it is the whole thing is built around this very box this box is made of alumina ceramic fiber core tiles that's the same technology NASA used for re-entry of the space shuttle into the atmosphere um, for those tiles it's incredible stuff and right here you've got the auxiliary air for the vortex area that goes in. The next thing we'll do is I'll drop in the insulation around it because that is a big deal. Ba boom, there it is. Now, in order to pour that around it, we'll need a form. And so there's a complete stove encasement that goes um, around that that you would drop the core into and pour that aircrete around it. And there that is as well. Um, for this to be a good looking stove, let's put some legs on it. Let's get the door on it real quick. And there we go. And see, the, the leg system, as you can see, it's just kind of a simple uh, angle iron and some nice looking rounded legs uh, for this box to sit on. The door is elegant but simple you've got the hinges um, riveted to it and a, a simple slider system okay guys just for fun let's go ahead and just kinda pan through the firebox we'll just go into one of these little holes here 
and there we have the door the next thing we're going to want to do here guys is bring in a containment pan that's going to contain the air creed insulation that goes around the vortex area where the auxiliary air port is so let's go ahead and bring that in just a simple sheet metal pan the next thing we're going to want to bring in guys is the actual uh, alumina ceramic uh, fi co fiber core tiles that go around the vortex area let's bring those in and there you go and everything and every component in this has certain dimensions and they're all for a specific reason so but the next thing we're going to bring in is the air create insulation that you would just pour in the pan around the vortex area after that we would want to bring in our air create heat riser now I put one in another stove I built last year and they just perform fabulously and so there's our heat riser and of course it's made completely of aircrete it does have a large stove pipe out, outer ring but it's completely insulated with aircrete the next thing we'll bring in is going to be the downdraft shroud now the downdraft shroud is going to force the air that rockets up through the heat riser back down and out of the stove pipe and this is where the stove pipe exits the next thing we're going to want to do because I put a mass ring around the downdraft and this mass ring can be adjusted you can put mass or pea gravel in out of it uh, for whatever height you want to get as much radiant heat as you want out of this or you can use that shroud as a battery as well I call that the downdraft mass containment uh, system or downdraft mass containment apparatus so let's drop it into place right now and there it is and as you can see it's just an open top ring um, there's some other uh, stuff on the bottom of it that I won't go into right now but you can just fill this with pea gravel so let's just go ahead and fill it with some pea gravel real quick um, and add some mass to it and there we go um, as you can see I wanted to make it realistic as possible so that is actual pea gravel filling in the mass area around that stove next I want to go ahead and drop in a directional valve um, if you wish and you just want that small amount of mass you could just run a stovepipe directly out the window insert but this is going to be a rocket mass heater so it's going to have a mass bench and it needs a directional valve um, if the flapper is flapped this way towards us covering this hole and if we look in real quick we can see the flapper and you've got the handle here and the flapper rotates over this way and covers this hole it would force the air directly out of the stovepipe if the flapper valve is pulled to us or the handles pulled to us flapper valve pushed away from us it would force the air this way which will take us through the bench so let's go ahead and build that bench real quick now bear in mind guys you could turn the downdraft shroud in any direction you could go you could exit uh, the exhaust straight out the back out this side out the front or out that side any way you want to go okay so there is our box bench box form I call it a form because in this example I'm going to create the mass by pouring air creed in it you could also dump pea gravel in it it wouldn't matter but if we look here what do we have we have the uh, entry and exit holes uh, into the box um, it's a I have this as a, a wooden box and I have it covered with carpet but we're going to need some uh, heat shrouds to go inside those uh, holes so let's pull those in real quick and there you go we've got some sheet metal uh, heat shrouds going in there we're gonna go ahead and bring down all the stovepipe 
and there you go. So we have the stove pipe coming out of the exit. Now when the flapper valve is towards the wall, it would force the air down here through the mass in the bench before it goes and would exit out. And if you look at a view of it like this, you can clearly see that if you flap the valve and cover this, it'll go straight up and out. So let's go ahead now and get some mass in the bench. I'm just, for this example, going to pour aircrete in it, but you could put pea gravel or uh, crushed up soapstone. Soapstone is incredible uh, for a battery for heat sinking, uh, as is aircrete. Oh. Actually, before I do that, let's go ahead and put the heat shield on. <laughs> I, uh, just for little critters or dogs or little kids um, that might touch those hot pipes, because they will get um, several hundred degrees, even after going through this mass down and out. Um, bear in mind, around the burn chamber, there's it's completely insulated it does get warm and hot but you can still touch it with your hand and it's not going to just like third degree burn you instantly in Syria that's um, that's for sure so I built this little uh, heat shield uh, if I want to if I go ahead and show you kind of like an x-ray view of it there you can see the whole innards of the stove and everything under there and how it goes. Let's get rid of that for for the moment. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, pour our um, aircrete in the box. Hope you guys aren't getting dizzy from all the movement, but I want to get different angles at it. And there we go we poured that aircrete in and once again if I view and show you like a x-ray view of it you know you can see through everything and see that uh, all the components are in place next thing we want to do is just put a lid on the the whole box and let's just for fun put some cushions on it and make it pretty I'm no interior decorator. No one's ever accused me of that. And so after that, after we get the cushions down, there's only two more elements of this stove that are um, in place. There's a clean out elbow that goes from on the other side of the window insert. And guys, keep in mind, this is an example of a basement or something. This one, I, I put a, uh, a backfill uh, retaining system around this window in case it had backfill up to, you know, within six inches of the top of the foundation. But there are a lot of homes that, uh, say if we look at this other window, that would just have flower beds and backfill up to the bottom of the windows and those windows would be daylight windows. But it doesn't matter uh, what kind you have, this system would work either way. So on this side of the equation, after coming out the window insert, we would have a clean out elbow. That is a removable elbow that will allow you to do any clean outs that you need. But I got to be honest with you guys, we ran this system for uh, a whole season and there was no buildup in it. There was nothing to clean out of it when we took it apart. It was absolutely incredible. So let's bring that into place. And there we go. And you can see that it is a aircrete insulated elbow. Um, I have a DIY system that allows pretty much anybody who wants to make one of these uh, to be able to make one. And then we'll go ahead and bring in the aircrete insulated stovepipe. And you can take that up as far as you would need to take it up uh, to accomplish what you need to do there. And as you can tell, the stovepipe 
is also insulated with aircrete all the way up. Aircrete has some great physical properties for this application, guys. The Aircrete stovepipe that I came up with, I call it my hot air vacuum. It's what makes this whole system work. There were so many people uh, when I was building the first stove and putting it in a cabin. They thought there's no way that you can exhaust up here and downdraft like 16, 18 inches and then go through the stove and make it work. They thought that it had to be basically ground level and have a 2% rise through it for it to ever work. What makes this work is the physical properties of aircrete, guys. What makes it work is that in, uh, aircrete insulated stovepipe. It is absolutely incredible. And um, I am going to go through in some future videos, step by step, component by component. And I'm going to talk about the dimensions of it and why they are that and the science behind it and what makes this so efficient and what makes it move through. The emissions on this thing is just water vapor it burns so clean that it has almost a zero emin uh, emissions this is the ultimate prepper system the fact that it's portable that it's movable that you can just take this apart and you can just uh, take it wherever you want and move it from home to home if you'd like uh, is incredible so um, there it is, guys. That's my concept. I've already sold one to a client here locally, and it's getting installed. And um, Mrs. Honeydew and I are looking into uh, other ways of getting these shipped out and moved to people, either through a possible Kickstarter or something of that nature. But I think this is a big deal. Uh, a really big deal to have a shippable rocket mass heater.